Heavenly Father, we consider this a privileged chance once again to learn. And uh, we want all that we can learn and the power that can sustain us in this work. I do sincerely pray that uh, you may help us to die to self, Lord. You may help us to uplift each other. There is a time that uh, we shall wish to help each other, but uh, that time will be too late. We shall throw all our means on the road. And so help us to store whatever we have in a place that our worms and caterpillars and cankerworms cannot load rich and the most eat of it. Help us to invest all we have for the kingdom, Lord, for who can estimate the worth of our soul. May you teach us how to deny self in this session. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And so, one of uh, the main problems that have hindered the going forth of the gospel is a people not uh, realizing and recognizing that uh, God is calling them to spend and expend themselves for the work that is before us. When uh, you go through the book of Malachi chapter 3, we are told how the denial of self actually brings about the latter rain. And when you go through the writings of Moses, you find that uh, it was by the Israelites being faithful offerers that the land was so blessed with the dew and the rain to make the crops be able to germinate. And they were able to be sustained by what they harvest for almost a year. And there was the years of Jubilee where the land had to lie uncultivated. But because they were faithful in what they gave, the Lord was able to give abundantly to go for from one harvest to another for almost two years without them cultivating the land. And so if the people of God could have realized the meaning of uh, tithes and offering, then also the latter rain could have attended to the work that we have right now and we will be so far away from what we are today. And so when we speak about this issue of tithes and offering, it is an important issue because God himself gave everything that heaven could give for our salvation. And we shouldn't be giving excuse for what we should be giving because it is not for benefiting anyone, but uh, it is for the all, uh, saving of souls. So the issue of tithes and offering, although many people have misused it, uh, we find that it is uh, another issue that uh, needs to be given to the people in a very right way. It needs to be expounded on and people may understand their obligation so that uh, they may be able to do their duties. Um, first of all, the people who haven't been converted, they can give. There will be people who are supposed to be reminded and reminded to give out. But our people who are converted, they don't have an issue in giving out to help in the work of the Lord. And so I'll be going through some familiar quotes in this first session. But um, in the second session, we shall be going through some minute points on tithes and offering the obligations, accountability, and how conferences have to touch each other on this issue of tithes and offering. Because movements are arising and individuals want to do what they want to do with their own tithe, allocate it the way they want, and so on. And so you find that uh, 
one person is so rich and does what he wants with his time, and another person is so poor and languishing in the field, yet he needs that. And so you find that the work is not equally distributed because people think that they can just give whoever they want tithe, they can direct to that minister, they can direct to that field and that. No, that is the reason we have the conferences so that uh, they may be able to manage some issues to do with tithes and offering. There are some other quotes that have been read by individuals in Sister White where she appropriated tithes to this and that, and where she says that you are responsible for your tithe, but they miss the whole context why these quotes were given and what was happening on the ground. If you ask yourself, uh, one person, why are you giving your tithe to uh, an individual minister, or why are you giving this tithe to this? Say that I read this quote and this quote, but ask them the context of the quote. Why was that thing done? Why did Sister White take such a step? Why did these women and men decide to give Sister White tithe? And why did they decide to send to Madison and all this stuff? People will never tell you these things. They just read the quotes of people, read them quotes that you can send an independent minister tithe and they go ahead doing such a things. When there is a place where tithe can be managed well, it should be directed there. But I'll be going into those uh, uh, minute things in, in the second session. But the Lord has specified the tenth of all your possession is mine, your gifts and offering are to be brought into the treasury to be used to advance my cause, to send the living creature to open the scriptures to those who sit in darkness. So the main work of tithe is to send what? A living creature to open the scriptures to those who sit in what? In darkness. I don't know how we, have, we shall help our grandmother. In Daughters of God, page 256, having had question directed here to me to answer, I have had special instruction from the Lord that the tithe is for special purpose, consecrated to God to sustain those who do what? Minister in the sacred work as Lord's chosen to do his work, not only in summonizing, but in ministering. Uses of the first type. It is to be especially devoted to the support of those who are bearing God's message to the world, and it should not be diverted from this purpose. Review and Herald Supplement, December 1, 1896. This fund should not in any case be devoted to any other use. It is to be devoted solely to support the ministry of what? The gospel. He thought, the focus of the quotes we have looked at is how the tithe is used, not who is being supported by the tithe. It is role played in doing the work that Lord will determine if the funds are being used for their rightful purpose, not who is being supported by tithe. I'll come to that. Uh, new chapter focus. This is uh, 90, page 249. Somebody who understands the new language can sit near the man. We are talking about tithes and offering and its uses. God has not changed. The tithe is still to be used for the support of the world, the support of the ministry. The opening of new fields requires more ministerial efficiency than we now have, and there must be means in the treasure. And we shall, if Brother Daniel doesn't talk about. Uh, sitting ministers that we have to talk about it because we have found that people have become lazy still they want to be paid tithe and offering there is no opening of new fields but they claim that they are workers of the gospel and so the fields tithe is should be used for opening new fields not just people sitting around and saying that they are workers and they are paid from tithe and these are the things we shall uh, look into because uh, the gospel work is being uh, 
taken as a, a place for laziness. If you don't have any other work to do, you just become, you say you are a minister and then you have to be supported, you sit there and do nothing but uh, uh, be supported by tithe. The reason that the Lord wants all the tithes in the treasury is that there may not be a scarcity of funds when his providence opens new fields to be occupied by the messengers of truth. That souls as precious in the sight of God as your own may come into the knowledge of the true God and Jesus Christ, whom he had sent, and in their turn become missionaries to the souls of others. Selections from testimonies to the managers and workers in our institutions. Also found in pamphlet 149, page uh, 61. If we were faithful tithers, then we shall have even more people being trained to go to the field and work being delegated at, uh, as it should. But uh, one reason why we are not having the tithe and the offering being directed in the right channel is because the gospel order has been neglected and church organization has not been there to perfect the work and so people move independently and they sort of seat money and the funds and at the end of the day you find that no work is being done apart from just uh, somebody telling you i'm going at a place to do some work please help me in this but at the end of the day when you look at the work that has been done there is no one more and more we must come to realize that the that the means that comes in the conference in the world. Now, people have said that every local church should manage their tithes, is it? But what are we reading on the screen? More and more, we must come to realize that the means that comes in the conference in the world. Tithes and gifts of our people should be used for support of the work, not only in the American cities, but also in the world. So should conferences organize themselves in a such a way they can receive tithes and offering? Huh? Because people have objected that we cannot have a conference receiving what? Tithes and offering. Is it true? Have you, have you heard such objections? Yeah, that every church has to manage it is tithes and offering. But is that the way the Lord wants it to be done? No, the Lord doesn't. And we saw how a conference is elected. Do, do people remember what we spoke yesterday about? That we can have the Kisi conference and the churches in Kisi, uh, they, 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 they are under Kisi conference. And so they collect their tithes and offering and um, it is managed by the people at the conference. Leave alone the things that are happening at the top of the current system where actually uh, 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 judicial judgment is not done, like what is happening there at home in my neighborhood, where you see, brothers and sisters, sometimes I become so angry about what is happening. And uh, I cannot fear to speak some things publicly on the camera because they are happening and they are seen and we shall see that. In the next segment, we shall see this is not the way things should be managed, that all money now, just because this prophet says that money conferences should organize how tithes and offering is used, now it means that all money should pass through the conference. That is not the thing that she's saying. Yes, the tithes and offering should go to the conference to be managed, but not all money should pass through the conference. You come at my neighborhood, the people are being rained on and they are still sending their tithes and offering to the conference. For what purpose? People can't even hold a meeting during rainy season. I asked the treasurer, why are you sending the money to the conference yet they can't even lend you 20,000 to put iron sheets on the roof? Such a like thinking where people have been conditioned to obey men rather than to obey God is not what. And now the church is emptying of the people and the pastor is complaining that the congregation is dying and there are no people coming to the church while he can't see that there's no roof on the church. Who will come to be rained on and this, to bathe in the sun in the midday because the tithes and offering are going to the conference. 
And so even though the prophet says that the tithes and the offerings have to be managed by the conference, but not all monies should pass through the conference. There should be some judicial judgment and people need to be wise in what they do. And so in the other extreme, everything is managed by the conference. On the other extreme, that no money should go to the conference. There need to be a balance of everything we do and not turn everything into fanatism, improper use of the type school purposes, conversers, and colportuas. This, the tithes should not be used for conversers, conversers and colportuas, and the building of the schools. A poor fund, instead of being benevolent enough as James chapter one, verse 25, that pure religion is this, to visit the age, the all the orphans, and keep yourself being polluted from the world, a poor fund is not set, and so you find that sometimes tithe is drawn to help the poor people. Yes, that should be used to help the aged ministers, but this is not a poor uh, fund. A poor fund is something else, but tithe can be used to help the aged ministers. Incidental expenses of the church, like the church that doesn't have a roof at home, we don't have to draw tithe from it to build the church. The offerings can be used by that and we shall see uh, that it's acceptable. Caring for the house of worship. The type is not used to care for the house of worship. Another thing, school teachers. Maybe we have opened a school and children are being taught. This is not left to the responsibility uh, of the type for paying these teachers. But you'll find that in another place he says that those teachers who are teaching only Bible instruction to the teacher, uh, to the children, are supposed to be take, paid from this type. Emergency personal situations. Tithe cannot be used for emergency personal situations, meeting house necessities or charities, medical, missionary, and hospitality. This is not the fund for the first type other lines of work, any other work, gaps made in business lines. Yes. I hope you are not writing cancels on stewardship, write CS. Yeah. Now, whatever you miss will be on the website. Our conference looked to the schools for educated and well-trained laborers, and they should give the schools some most heart and intelligent support. Light has been plainly given that those who minister in our schools, teaching what? The word of God. You see, in the improper use of tithe, she says that it should not be used in our schools. Have you seen that? But now, again, in the next, emphasis, testimonies to the church, volume 6, 215, she says, our conferences look to the schools for educated and well-trained laborers, and they should give the schools some most heart and intelligent support. Light has been plainly given that those who minister in our schools doing what? Doing what? Teaching the word of God, explaining the scriptures, educating the students in the things of God should be supported by what? Type man. This instruction was given long ago, and more recently, it has been repeated again and again. So leave alone those bio, uh, uh, geography and all other subjects, mechanics, teachers. They should be supported, and uh, uh, from other funds, or the, the the parents of those children should be able to pay a school fees to pay out the teachers who are teaching these subjects. But those who are solely ministering in the word, explaining scriptures, educating the students in the things of God should be supported by the tithe money. Some utterly fail to realize the importance of missionaries being also medical missionaries. A gospel minister will be twice as successful in his work if he understands how to treat 
disease. So people don't need just to go out as gospel workers, but they can double it as medical missionaries, and uh, they have to be uh, assisted with the tithe. When means have been pressed upon me, I have refused it or appropriated it to such a charitable objects as publishing association. But the misuse of funds in former years before uh, his administration should not be regarded as casting a reflection upon him. If, he con if the conference sanctioned those matters and sanctioned paying from the tithe the expenses of those who are working in the interest of the object lessons campaign, Brother Cardi should not be blamed for mismanagement. So there is a brother who was being paid by time, just as a charitable object, and was working on the object lessons campaign. And it was found out that this was a mistake. And so he said that this is not a matter that should be discussed, but everything should be rectified and not continue in such a way. And so, uh, before we do anything, we, we have to gather all the information we have on doing such a thing. Where does it fall? Does it fall in the offerings or does it fall in the type? And we are told that those ministering, not only sermonizing, they have to be sustained by type. The gender question, there have been a gender question, should women also be included in tithes and offer, uh, uh, tithe pay? God has entrusted talents to his servants and he expects them to see that, that mistakes can be readily made. Make no mistake in neglecting to correct the error of giving ministers less than they should receive. When you see persons in necessity who have been placed in positions of trust, let God move upon your heart to set things right. The tithe should go to those who labor in word and doctrine, be they what? Men or women. So now somebody asked that the women are not ordained. How do they receive tithe? Such a good question. She answers, if women do what? That is not the most? To many of those who labor in word and doctrine, and if their works testify that they are accomplishing a work that has been manifestly neglected, should not such a labor be looked upon as being as rich in results as the work of the ordained ministers? Should it not command the hire of a labor? This question is not for men to do what? The Lord has settled it. You are, not, you are to do your duty to the women who labor in the gospel, whose work testify that they are essential to carrying the truth into families. A woman has not been ordained, but uh, she's laboring to reach out to the communities, to the neighborhood. This may be even uh, uh, the wife of uh, a gospel minister. It may be a medical missionary. She's doubling medical missionary with gospel work. She's going house to house, supplying, uh, uh, preaching to these people and giving them uh, the word of God. The laborer is what? The, uh, uh, the laborer is worth his pay. Women as well as men are needed in the work that must be done. Those women who give themselves to the service of what? Who labor for the salvation of others by doing what? Now she's defining minutely how a woman qualifies to receive from the type. Those women who give themselves to the service of the Lord who labor for the salvation of others by doing house to house work, which is a taxing, as taxing as more taxing than standing before a congregation should receive payment for their labor. If a man is worthy of his hire, so also is what? Let us go to page 112. So, it is not ordination that qualifies a somebody to receive from time. All who desire an opportunity for true ministry and who will give themselves unreservedly to God will find in the conversing work opportunities to speak upon many things pertaining to the future, immortal life. The experience thus gained will be of the greatest value to those who are fitting themselves for the ministry. It is the accompaniment of the Holy Spirit of God that does what? Both men to become pastors to what? To the flock. Now you see, again, the word pastor is applied to a woman. 
in this context. Gifts versus positions. This is what actually we argue most about. And this is what rules out women from being ordained. In 1 Corinthians 12 and Ephesians 4, Paul outlines gifts of the Spirit. These gifts are given to all God's children, men and women. In 1 Timothy 3, 1 to 13, the role of and function of the bishop is delineated. This person is identified as one who must be the husband of one wife and that ruleth his own house. This is a description of what? Position. Are you still together? Yeah. Not gift or role being served. So there are positions and women cannot be elected in positions. Some of the positions. They are gifts and no man can elect a man or a woman to a gift. And so when a woman is working under gift and a man is working under gift, they con should be considered as laborers in the vineyard of God. Under shepherd roles. Those who occupy the position of under shepherds are to exercise a watchful diligence over Lord, the Lord's flock. This is not to be dictatorial vigilant, but one that tends to encourage and strengthen and uplift. Ministry means more than sermonizing. It means honest personal labor. The church on the earth is composed of erring men and women who need patient and staking effort that they may be trained and disciplined to work with acceptance in this life and in the future life to be crowned with glory and immortality. Pastors are needed, faithful shepherds who will not flatter God's people, not treat them harshly, but who will fill them with the bread of life, men who in their lives feel daily the converting power of the Holy Spirit and who cherish a strong and selfish love toward those for whom they labor. And uh, I'm reminded of Anna. Does Anna qualify to receive tithe? Do you remember Anna the prophetess who was in the temple all the days of her life after the husband had died? And then she was ministering there with Simon. There are women who have decided that they will dedicate their lives even in educating. In fact, there is a verse that says that uh, let the women, the older women, do the work of educating the younger women in Timon. These are the people who have dedicated themselves unreservedly for the work of the Lord. And the church should recognize their work. Sister White says that. Uh, when they had been neglected, I took my time and gave to these women. And somebody told Sister White, you see, you are giving time to the wife of John Laubra and these brethren, and their uh, husbands are receiving time. What did she tell them? Their ministers as what? Their husbands, and the pay to their husband does not mean they have been paid. And so if my wife today will uh, say that now I'm no longer just staying in the house, I am deciding to do ministerial work. And the church sees, sees that she is qualified, that she can do the work and she does the work. She goes to the field and she's given probation time to do the work. And we see the fruit, the work, the church should be able to pay her as they may even decide to pay you. My pay is not my wife's pay. My pay is just like I will go to the field, do any other computer work and bring bread to the table, just as I'm ministering right now. Is my salary when I'm doing computer work the salary of my wife? No. She can also seek an employment. The work of the gospel ministry is the sowing of the seed, Christ triumphant, page 236. My brethren, in the gospel ministry, let us feed the flock of God. Let us bring encouragement and cheerfulness to every heart. And so you see that these people who are being paid by tithe, what is their work? It is to feed the flock of God. It is just not to instruct one time uh, and one season this, but they have given their full-time labors to bring souls into truth and into the kingdom. Let us turn the eyes of our brethren and sisters away uh, 
from unlovely traits of character possessed by nearly everyone and teach them to behold Christ, the one altogether loved, the chiefest among 10,000. The work of the gospel minister, the work of uh, uh, the worker is not just to appear on Sabbaths and give sermons and go away and you say that is a gospel work. There should today be in the field 100 well done what? Qualified laborers where now there is. But God, God, uh, God cannot look upon the present condition of things with approval, mm -hmm. but with condemnation. His treasury is done what? Deprived of the means that should be used for the support of the gospel ministry in the fields nigh and far off. Those who proclaim the message of truth before great congregation and who do house to house work are doing double missionary work and in no case are their salaries to be cut down. And so, it is because the church members has been, have been not converted in one way or another to the work of this time that the treasury doesn't have enough to put people in the field. But again, there are some places, she says, as we near the end of the time, there are those people who will sacrifice and cut down their salaries so that more gospel ministers may be put in the field. Do we have such a laborers? A ministers. The one who can say, if I'm receiving 10,000, let me receive 2,000 so that we may have another five ministers in the field. Do we have such a people? Have we learned self denial? Have we been converted enough to know that there's a greater work to do, but the laborers are not there? And the other way to bring in more others is you know, there are people who want to work, not for salaries, but how they can start it and how they can be able to be sustained even just for a, a daily bread is not there. And so they have resorted to doing other things and the field is deprived by people who can do the work of God. Why? Because somebody is getting 20,000 and this brother cannot even get 1,000 to go in the field and do the work. And so as we near the end, we have to realize God is not just calling gospel order and church organization, but he's also calling for self-denial in order for the work to be finished. Right now, you people, you are crying we don't have gospel workers. Is that not your cry? What have you done towards it? You are still waiting for God to drop money from the mountains, is it? While on your table, you can put their food that is more than what your family can take that day. Why not cut your daily supper so that somebody may go into the field? His service requires and ever will require means. The great mission and work for the salvation of soul is to be carried forward. In the tithe, with gifts and offering, God has made ample provision for his work. He intends that the ministry of the gospel shall be fully sustained. He claims the tithe as his own and it should be, uh, it should ever be regarded as sacred uh, reserve to be placed in the treasury for the benefit of his cause, for the advancement of his work, for sending his messengers into the regions beyond, even to the uttermost parts of the earth. In a Christian service, uh, in Christian service we find of this man who says that he's working 24 hours for the Lord. Have you read that story? So, this man desired to be a gospel mission or uh, missionary and uh, for the Lord and uh, his father died. You read the story in Christian service. And so he couldn't go to the field to do the double work that he was supposed to do. And so what he did, uh, while he was working in his country, he says that he was able to employ a person in another country. Remember it? Yeah. I'm forgetting the reference. It is in Christian service. So uh, just type India, CHS India, I think. 
I want to read this story because it's so encouraging. And I want you to do something about it because we want to finish the work. Uh, CHS, I'll just type India and see if I get that quote immediately. If I don't find it, somebody will find it later and read to us. CHS 165. CHS 165. No. In fact, I have bookmarked it. If uh, that is not the thing. Uh, I should get it from the word night. Just eluding. Bam. Are you there? This story is so interesting that uh, I can't just leave it like that. Who has found it? Sorry for that, but uh, if somebody finds this, let me get it. And so the Lord uh, will wonder uh, people who can uh, sacrifice for his work and do the work of this time by sacrificing even their own salary so that uh, they may be uh, 24 hours per day uh, working for the Lord. Whatever is the reason they are, need, they are in need and to help them is an important line of home mission or work. The unfortunate need ones should not be sent away from home to be cared for. Let each church feel her responsibility to have a special interest in the feeble and the age. One or two among them can certainly be taken care of. The tithe should not be appropriated for this work. The word of God has specified how the tithe should be used. So we were looking at uh, the misuse of um, the first type and the use and the misuse of the first type. Uh, in this uh, segment two, second type and missionary work. That is what we sometimes call an offering, but um, it is not an offering per se. It was that um, after a person had paid the first time. Let me see this. CHS 170.4. Thank you so much, Naomi. Let us look at this then. Before I go to the next thing. 170.4. Mm. 
It doesn't have paragraph four. An American businessman. An American businessman. That is? 170 paragraph four, is it? Yeah, that is the problem. I'm in a pioneer section. That is why I'm looking for this thing and it can come on the screen. Hmm? 170.4. I had bookmarked it. Yeah, yeah that is it. Let us, look, let us look at this. Thank you so much. Uh, so, this is a new share. An American businessman who was an honest Christian in a conversation with a fellow worker remarked that he himself worked for Christ how many hours? 24 hours of the day. As uh, in all my business relation, he said, I try to represent my master. As I have opportunity, I try to win others to him. All day I am working for Christ. And at night while I sleep, I have a man working for him in China. Yes, not in India, in him in China. In explanation, he added, in my youth, I determined to go as a missionary to the heathen. But on the death of my father, I had to take up his business in order to provide for the family. Now, instead of going myself, I support a missionary. In a, such a town of such a province of China, my worker is stationed. And so even while I sleep, I am through my representative still working for Christ. Amen. You never seen that, now see it. So God is calling for self-denial. There are people who think just when they have their gospel workers and they receive the tithe, now that is the end of the thing. You need also to employ somebody that you trust to be your Bible work. This is a minister having a Bible work. The, the, the worker may not be employed by now the conference, but you see the gospel minister has employed him. You see that? Yeah. Because maybe he is training him or such a kind of work. And so let us broaden our ideas and think more than what we have been thinking about. And so I was talking about the second tithe where actually, after you take, pay 10% of your tithe, say like, like uh, you have a uh, hundred shillings, what is the 10%? 10. 10 shillings, is it? Mm -hmm. You remain with? 90, from this 90 comes the second tithe, which is another 10%. Nine book, is it? Still, you have a lot of money more than God. Or how do you see it? Yeah. yeah. God gives you a lot and it just requires little. But even giving this 10 is a problem. So how will you give the second one? It's a problem. But we should start practicing giving the second time. And then even after that, there is the taking care of the, the widows, the orphans, the benevolent, and such a pounds. Where actually we are being told that the Israelites, almost three quarters of their money was spent on the work of God. How much do you spend for the work of God? There will be an abundance of places to use the second tithe in doing honest missionary work in new places. The consecration to God of a tithe of all increase, whether of the orchard, uh, harvest field, the flocks, herds, or the labor of, of brain or hand. The devotion of a second tithe for the relief of what? Poor, Poor and other. The novel and use extended to keep fresh before the people the truth of God's ownership of all and of the opportunity to be channels of his blessings. It was a training adapted to kill out all narrow and selfishness and to cultivate breadth and nobility of character. And uh, let me show you this. This should be in Ministry of Healing. You know, sometimes we, we struggle with uh, the issue of character perfection, and I'll just say this in passing. Uh, The poor shall not cease. This is uh, MH one eighty six. 
paragraph 2. This is what we read. Together, the arrangements did not have a only do away with what? It was not God's purpose that poverty should only. It is one of his means of the development of what? The poor, he says, shall never cease out of the land. Therefore I command thee, saying, Thou shalt open thine hand wide unto thy brother, to thy poor, and to thy needy in thy land. So just this giving of the poor is not uh, something that should be jested about. What is the greatest battle to be ever fought? Steps to Christ, page 43. Self is the greatest battle to be ever fought or weighed. And the heart cannot be wholly consecrated without this battle being won. What is the thing that really takes away selfishness? Continue. She says that this is how we know that character is being uh, perfected. Uh, I'll show you something, how character is being perfected in uh, the giving of uh, tithes and offering. How completion is attained, character completion, um, how it is accomplished. Uh, let me start with this. This is uh, COL 384 paragraph two. Let us read together. Love is the basis of what? Whatever the what? No man has pure love to God unless he has unselfish love for his brother. But we can never come into possession of this spirit by trying to do what? What is needed is the love of Christ in the heart. When self is merged in Christ, love springs forth spontaneously. The completeness of is attained when the impulse to help and bless others springs constantly from within. When the sunshine of heaven fills the heart and is revealed in the countenance. Testimony to the Church, Volume 1, 237, Paragraph 1. This typing system, I did what? I saw will do what? And manifest the true state of the heart. If the brethren in Ohio have this matter presented before them in its true bearing and are left to decide for themselves, they will see wisdom and order in what? system. Those who have been desiring their character to be completed, perfection to be attained, try to be a faithful offerer of tithes and offerings. Acts of Apostle, page 560, paragraph 2. Those who will gain the blessings of what? Must learn what? First, learn the meaning of self-sacrifice. But these are things we do not hear. But they are so interesting. And so, this is one of the ways that uh, actually self will be consumed. But watch thou in all things and do afflictions to do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Those who enter into the gospel field should be left to earn themselves a reputation, even if it must be through trials and privations. They should first give full proof of their what? Ministry. So no one should just be hurried into the field with tithes and offerings as a minister. They should first be proved before they can be enrolled as a, a people who will gain by it. Men who are chosen of God to labor in this course will give proof of their high calling and will guard it as their highest duty to grow and improve until they shall become able workmen. Then as they manifest an earnestness to improve upon the talent which God has entrusted to them, they should be helped judiciously. Okay? Yeah, never just hurry somebody into the field. We will pay you tithe and offering. Uh, we will support you from the tithe and offering and then go labor. Tithes and offerings should not be a motivation for putting somebody in the field. And when you 
hear workers coming into the scene and they, they ask, how much shall I be paid for working? Know that God has not called them. It is a straight statement I make, but that is the truth. True. But the encouragement given them should not serve of, of flattery, for Satan himself will do enough of that kind of work. Men who think that they have a duty to preach should not be sustained in throwing themselves and their what? Families at once upon the brethren for support. They are not entitled to do this until they can show good fruits on their labor, of their labor. If women do the work that is not the most agreeable, we have seen this, uh, that uh, women can be sustained from time. But uh, we have another thing. There is a danger now of injuring what? Young preachers. And those who have but little experience, but flattery, and by relieving them of burdens in life. When not preaching, they should be doing what they can for their own support. This is the best way to test the nature of their call to preach. Can they double this? And if they prove themselves, then they should be put. This is uh, on time. Gospel workers page 146. So today, God, today the Savior calls us, as he called Matthew and John and Peter to his work. If our hearts are touched by his love, the question of compensation will not be uppermost in our minds. There's a a certain uh, preacher, a young person who came into the ministry, and uh, I think the pioneers were somehow receiving some uh, higher wage than he was receiving. But uh, it's like he was working in the field most, and he said that he wanted his uh, wage to be increased to the wage of the pioneers. And Sister White told him to resign immediately <coughs> and look for another job. Do you read this story? Okay, these are children's stories that you should be hearing in church instead of the cuts you went to heaven. So people should not be driven by uh, the sum they will get in the field. In fact, we, we, when you go back to, uh, I wish we'll go back to the presentation by uh, Pastor David Sims and watch it again. The training of the gospel workers and them going to the field. I don't know if you listen carefully to the story of uh, the young person who didn't want to be trained and all this stuff, and now he's in problem and all that stuff. People are driven by money to go to the field, but at the end of the day, where are they? They are nowhere. Today, the Savior calls us, as he called Matthew and John and Peter, to his work. If our hearts are touched by his love, the question of condemnation will not be uppermost in our minds. We shall rejoice to be co-workers with Christ, and we shall not fear to trust in his care. If we make God our strength, we shall have clear perceptions of duty and unselfish aspirations. Our life will be actuated by a noble purpose, which will raise us above sordid motives. There is a lack of ministers because ministers have not been encouraged. Some ministers who have been sent to foreign lands to enter fields never before have been given the instruction, you must sustain yourselves. We have not the means with which to support you. This ought not to be if the tithe with gift and offering was brought into the treasury. When a man enters the ministry is to be paid from the tithe enough to sustain his family, it's not to feel that he is a beggar. The impression is becoming quite common that the sacred disposition of the tithe no longer exists. Many have lost their sense of the Lord's requirements. The tithe is sacred, reserved by God for himself. It is to be brought into the treasury to be used to sustain the gospel laborers in their work. For a long time, the Lord has been robbed because there are those who do not realize that the tithe is God's reserved portion. 
Many ministers are lying in their graves, brought there by sorrow and disappointment, and by the hardship brought upon them because they did not receive sufficient of their labors. Now, there is a spirit coming among us, uh, independent uh, people who have come from the general conference, that uh, there is no need of uh, sustaining the ministry. And uh, they are so slack in uh, bringing tithes and offering to the house of the Lord so that it may be used for the work. I'm asking you leaders and the people who are here as church members, because you are leaders and also you are church members. Where is the same zeal you had for GC, for this independent uh, work that we have been given? This is the question that I pose to us. Did we have zeal? Did you have this zeal when you were in the general conference? Huh? Until even they use the wrong methods to get money from you, true or false? Where is the zip? If I could go and check up in your books how you used to give, is it how you are giving today? I remember on my type uh, envelope, I could write first type. I could write second type, I could write benevolence, I could write church building. Check my envelope for typing now. And also come offering, is it? Where was I getting the money? Why was I giving? Huh? <laughs> yeah. Where is the zeal? Are you still continuing with the same zip? Huh? Or you have doubled the zip, Brother John Mook? Praise the Lord, at least we have somebody in the house who is doing according to that. Yeah, if you are doing that, my brother, God bless you. Yeah, that is the thing. God bless you. Others, where is the zip? Maybe I'm fortunate my new I don't want us to comment maybe ourselves, but where is the zip? It died, is it? So you want also when you come back to reorganization, people to start praising. You want a monitor. I tell you, it is lack of conversion that brings such a condition of things. I remember I could get almost 40K, but 30 goes into the church. I, by that time, I was single by days. What should I do with my man? I love God. I was in those churches, I love God so much. You, know, you people, you have never experienced the love of God because you were born at Venice. I was not born at Adventist. When I came to the church and read, read the great Congress, Brian, you, you haven't read Great Controversy. If you read that book, you will know the work is ending tomorrow. And you want to do everything to make sure it ends tomorrow. It's like you are reading the daily news when you are reading the, the Great Controversy. I'm reading this history of reformation. I'm reading about the mark of the beast and I'm looking at the world and I'm seeing this world has to come to an end and the work has to be finished. I could take like 20,000, I buy great controversies, I'm walking in the streets of Maseno, supplying to everyone I meet. You people, you don't know what it means the work should be finished. And I was in the GC. And right, I was not doing any other work, just cyber work and taking snaps. Figure picture, freelance photographer. I was a very rich young fool. <laughs> and the ten that remains, they go to clothes and eat fashion. On the other hand, I'm finishing on the work, and the other hand, the leg is in the work. Very rich young food. 
But what am I trying to say? That I saw the work is ending and what I knew that 90% of what I earned had to go to church, not to remain to me. But today, we have earthly dwellers, people who are planning to dwell on this earth forever. To only get 10 shillings from them, you have to explain everything you are going to do with the 10 shillings. Is it? Let us be careful how we think that we are reorganizing and reforming when we are going back to the places where we should. It will be better we stay at GC and give everything. At the present time, the means from the churches must not be diverted into so many different channels that the treasury is empty. Our people need to be faithful in paying their tithe that the ministry may be supported. And the necessary work done in this land. Many more camp meetings must be done what? Where is the money to hold in the camp meeting? Efforts are to be put forth for the people all through the camp meetings. Visiting is to be done. Words in season are to be spoken. Efforts are to be made to make the meetings revival meetings. And one of the things that we have failed in is thinking that the camp meetings, you talked about it, my brother, the other time, that the camp meetings are for Adventists. No. The camp meetings were not meant for Adventists, is it? They were a tool of evangelism. And I have written some material on camp meeting, and uh, also it's on the website. That this is the time that we should, uh, we should uh, distribute our material thoroughly at no money, no price. But those who can afford, we can sell to them. But this is the time that should be devoted that the youth in those meetings, and before the camp meeting was to be done, do you know what was done? The people visited the places that the camp meeting said to be done, distribute materials so that when the camp comes, actually people have agitated the interest in that camp. What do you do with your camp meeting? This day, how do you plan the camp meeting? No villager even knows that they will become meeting. Only the church members, is it? No trucks are supplied. Nothing. And then we just go there. We, it is like uh, we are on a holiday, on a honeymoon. When we should be evangelizing. You know that we are told that before, when the camp ends, a church had to be planted. Have you read these materials? How many churches have we planted since we came out of GC, out of the camp meetings? Can you name one? You did a camp meeting and you planted a church. You are trying to remember. Huh? So are you improving or have you gone down? Now let, let us bring these things practically out because we like having theoretical information among us. But I hope this conference changes us and how we think and how we conduct things. Let not this come be done this year and our church is not planned. Let honest effort be made. Let materials be supplied. Simple leaflets of one page is two pages with simple messages, not, not just holding a camp meeting because every year we have to hold a camp meeting. Means have to be brought. And so God calls for a spirit of sacrifice. God never designed that the law of the tithing system should be of no account among the, his people. But instead of this, he designed that the spirit of sacrifice should widen and deepen for the closing of the work. So a proper system of tithing and offering will widen and deepen for the closing of the work. And so let me come to an end because um, 14 minutes passed. 
God, now God calls upon you in your turn to make great efforts and to sacrifice in order to place the truth before those who are in darkness. God requires this. You profess to believe the truth, let your work testify to the, to the fact. Unless your faith works, it is dead. Nothing but a living faith will save you in the fearful sins which are before you. And so, uh, not only does God require the tithe, but he requires that all we have be used to his word. There must be no spendthrift habits. It is God's property that we are handling. Not one dollar or one shilling is our own. The squandering of money in luxuries deprives the poor of the means necessary to supply them with food and clothing. And so Christ asked for all it will not do, or it will not do to withholding anything. The liberality required of the Hebrews was largely to benefit their own nation. Today the work of God extends all over all of the earth. Surely our obligations are much greater than were those of what? Ancient Israel. And so, I saw that in the arrangement of the systematic benevolence, hearts will be tested and proved. It is a constant living test. It brings one to understand his own heart, to see whether the truth or the love of the world predominates. Here is a test for the natural, selfish, and covetous. So the tithing and offering system tries if you are still covetous. Maybe we didn't see things in such a way. But uh, the Lord is calling us to start viewing these things in another way. And so, may the good Lord be with us and uh, let us uh, ask ourselves a question. If uh, the love of God is in our hearts or uh, if we have grown uh, uh, cold in uh, our offering. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you that you always have all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. I want to read a verse. I want to read a verse. That is the last slide. Freely, freely you have received, freely give Matthew 10, but I want to read uh, Proverbs chapter 11 as we close to maybe open the flow for some uh, 13 minutes of questions and uh, contribution. The book of uh, Proverbs chapter <coughs> 11. The book of Proverbs chapter 11. Look at the string, or if you have your Bibles, you can follow along. 11.23. The desires of the righteous is only what? But the expectation of the wicked is? There is he that does what? Scattereth and yet? And there is that withholdeth more than is meet, but it tendeth to what? The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. He that withholdeth corn, the people shall do what? But blessing shall be upon the head of him that selleth. He that diligently seeketh good procureth favor, but he that seeketh mischief, it shall come unto him. God be with us that uh, we may think about uh, these words and uh, he may give us a new zip in these issues. Shall we pray? Glory and honor be unto thee, Heavenly Father, for thy loving kindness, the earth and all in them. It's you as Lord. 
And if you are hungry, you will never tell us because you have a thousand bulls on the mountain. But the reason why we are involved in this work is humanity may touch humanity. And so the blessings you have given unto us help us to know that our neighbor have to be sustained, Lord. I pray that uh, you may remove uh, self and selfishness in our hearts that we may be able to sacrifice for thy work. And not only that, Lord, that after we have done everything, we may even avail ourselves for the work to be accomplished. And so thank you for thy grace and thank you for the messages you are giving unto us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.